Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox for the Future Grid team. I'm pleased to introduce you to our MOOC uh, collection. And then also to actually say why you might be interested in Future Grid in the first place. So we are producing and um, will extend a set of MOOCs. These are, of course, massively online open courses that cover the core capabilities of Future Grid and also various advanced capabilities and tools. The core capabilities include uh, two discussions of Future Grid itself, one an introduction and the other a presentation that just gives more detail of the of material introduced in the first presentation. Note that as always in MOOCs, these presentations are divided into separate lessons, which are typically at most 10 minutes, and so you can um, um, choose the lessons that you really want. After these introductory material and overview material, we offer MOOCs on the core capabilities of Future Grid. One tells you how to set up a portal account in a project, and then another tells you how to use traditional non-virtualized high-performance computing HPC nodes. Then we have two MOOCs discussing virtual machines. One discusses the OpenStack Grizzly release, and the other one discusses the Eucalyptus Virtual Machine Manager. These uh, core capabilities are supplemented by advanced topics. Currently, we have one on the IPOP system, IP over P2P, which can be used by future group projects. We will add more topics in this advanced area, including area, including uh, capabilities such as Hadoop and MapReduce, MPI, and things like that. Now, let me just quickly remind you what Future Grid is. Future Grid is part of the Exceed system. It is a test bed with a cloud focus, and we're just coming to the end of our third year of use. Future Grid test bed provides to its users the support of research. It is not trying to do production work, it's trying to allow you to test things and get ready to do great production science. Whether that science is either in computer science or whether it's in an application area like, uh, like biology, chemistry, physics, engineering, and so on. We have a very flexible environment that allows you to look at different middleware, looking at things like interoperability, the functionality of your software, its performance, or just evaluate whether some piece of software is interesting to you. Future Grid does not runs in interactive mode, not in batch mode. And it supports a variety of different software, grid, cloud, and HPC. And you can run them with or without virtual machines. And you can actually test whether it's how the same software runs with and without the overhead of virtual machines. It's particularly suitable for education and teaching. And we, are, we have supported and will support many classes on Future Grid. We have OpenStack, Eucalyptus, Nimbus, Open Nebula, and HPC environments. And we support uh, different storage models, including those familiar from high performance computing and also from clouds, um, such as the OpenStack um, <coughs> Swift cloud storage system. The typical usage of Future Grid are illustrated here. We've had 318 approved projects by July 3rd, 18, 1860 users. Those users are dominant in the USA, but especially when we've had classes, we have significant users from other countries. Of those uh, projects, 51% are from computer science or middleware, 3% interoperability, 22% uh, in domain science, half of those in life science, half in non-life science areas. Life science tends to be a little bigger than uh, other test, other exceed systems because uh, it's a new application, and therefore there's more testing to be done. 14% of the projects are in training, education, and outreach. But more than 14% of the users are in that area, because classes tend to have more users than research projects. The final category is 8.8%. That's in the evaluation area. That includes the work we do for Exceed on testing their software. Here's the various services we offer. We offer cloud uh, services, including MapReduce, the um, Hadoop file system, HBase, and the Swift Object Store. The infrastructure as a service, we offer Nimbus, Eucalyptus, OpenStack, 
and also the uh, virtual networking system Vine. From in the grid area, we have Genesis, Unicor, Saga, and Globus. HPC, we have MPI, OpenMP, and CUDA. There is one um, system, Delta, in the future grid um, in collection, which has a G, uh, GPU uh, uh, capability. Then the final set of uh, services are in the so-called testbed area. These are things that support the operation of future grid and provide you uh, greater capabilities. Those will be defined by MOOCs, which we will develop soon. Here's the hardware of Future Grid. There's not very much hardware, just 4,700 cores. Um, uh, we have a total performance of around 50, somewhat over 50 teraflops. We have a lot of our machines have a lot of memory, and a lot of the machines have quite a few uh, disks, up to 12 terabytes per server. That's to allow one to store, to explore the special application that needs lots of memory, or the special um, cloud-like applications which tend to want to store data on the same node as the computing. We also have a scale MP system echo that is just coming online. Here's what the systems look like, and um, they're scattered around the country. Some in Indiana, some in San Diego. Uh, one cluster hotel in Chicago, one in Florida. And uh, one of Texas um, uh, Advanced Computing Center. I thank you for your interest in Future Grid, and please go through the other MOOCs to get more detail. Thank you very much.